Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and may I welcome you to worship at the Robin Chapel here in Edinburgh. I'd like to introduce to you our musical team who are going to be leading us in our worship this afternoon. Very often these are people who are behind the scenes and remain figures who are not introduced and it is time that they were brought to the fore. We have great pleasure in introducing James Slimmings, who is our Director of Music here at the chapel, and he sings alto, tenor and bass. But today he is going to sing the tenor parts. Sally Carr sings soprano, and she is the lady who you have seen singing probably most frequently over the weeks that have passed. As well as being soprano, she will add to her range today by singing alto. And there is Callum Robertson. He is our accompanist, and today he will be contributing on the voice parts by singing bass. It's a great musical team we've got, and it's a great pleasure it gives me to present them to you at the beginning of our worship. Let us now worship God together, and I underline together. For we do so in the power of the Spirit, we do so as part of the communion of saints present, and we do so ever mindful that we are also united with saints who have gone before us for the glory of our Father in heaven. So let us worship God, let us prepare our hearts in prayer. Let us all and everything on the earth acclaim God. Sing to the glory of his name. Come and see what God has done. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Blessed is God who has not withdrawn from us his love and his care. Amen. Our opening hymn is the hymn 425. It is paraphrase 48. The Saviour died, but rose again, and it will be sung to the traditional tune of St Andrew. <laughs> Our 
Our call to prayer today is to be found in these words. God, show your faithfulness to us. Bless us and make your face smile upon us. For then the whole earth will acknowledge your ways, and all the nations of earth will know of your power to save. May all the nations praise you, O God. May all the nations praise you. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Most gracious God, who gives the fruits of the earth for the benefit of all your creatures, we give thanks to you for abundant harvests and plentiful food. We pray for those in our land who are denied these gifts and seek your forgiveness for our complicity in their want. We thank you for our government, designed to be responsive to the will of the governed and for the choices that are ours in this land of opportunity. We pray for those whose voices are not heard and for those who do not hear. Forgive us when our choices are selfish ones and forgive us especially when we do not choose to raise our own voice against the pain of those among us who suffer needless want. Most of all, O God, we give you thanks for the revelation of your love in Jesus Christ, who came that everyone might have life and have it in abundance. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ for reading this Sunday is to be found in the 15th chapter of St. Matthew, reading at the 10th verse. The Gospel of Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean, but what comes out of the mouth, that is what makes him unclean. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a man unclean. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what makes a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered, 
woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his holy gospel. And to his name be the praise and the glory. This may seem a strange question, but are you looking for a quiet weekend? You're probably not looking for that quiet a weekend, having been under lockdown for so many weeks that you would be glad to get away and have freedom to roam. But on the other hand, it may be that the stresses of these past few weeks and months have created that sense that it would be absolutely lovely to get away for a break and a quiet weekend. If you have been tracing the readings of the past three weeks, you would notice that in the first week's reading, Jesus is hit literally with the tragic news of the death of John, his cousin. And he goes and he seeks a, a place of solace and quiet. But ultimately, he rejoins the disciples to be caught up in the episode of teaching that leads to the feeding of the 5,000 men. The Bible narrative then goes on and tells us about the story of Jesus again seeking a quiet place. And he sends the disciples on ahead of them across the lake and the storm comes and rages around and he walks on the water, frightens the living daylights out of his disciples and yet Peter has that sense of curiosity, courage, individuality, who knows? And he asks that Jesus invite him to walk on the water. And this Jesus does. And Peter responds. And when he takes his eye, the eye of his mind and his heart, off what is happening to him because of Jesus beckoning, 
he sinks like a stone and cries out, Save me, Lord! That then gives us an indication as to the nature of the confession that is in Peter's heart and now expressed in voice and action. We now come to that next picture of the discussion with the Pharisees and others on what might be described as domestic hygiene within the Pharisaic code, the washing of hands before eating. Truly, to you and I today, a very essential aspect of personal hygiene in the like of COVID-19. But in that context, it was tied up with religious law. And so Jesus goes into the explanation that it's what comes out of a man's heart that marks him. And that is the key thing that each and every disciple must remember. But Jesus is still looking for this quiet moment. And so he decides that they would leave the area of the Galileans and move north into Tyre and Sidon, a, a, a Gentile area where there were many, many fewer Jews and therefore the likelihood of being asked various questions and various demands being made upon him would be consequently reduced. But he doesn't seem to have gone very far into the territory when he encounters this Canaanite woman. And it's very interesting that the text describes her as a Canaanite woman, not a Gentile woman, but a Canaanite woman. Because the Canaanites and the Jews were truly at loggerheads to each and every one within the various clans. They were anathema. And therefore, this woman is approaching Jesus from an extremity within the religious and social circle of the time. She is one who would be seen to be quite opposed to whatever Jesus stood for. And yet she came to him. And she says in a very bold, honest, open and upright way that her daughter is ill and that she needs healing. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. It's not, Lord, son of David, have mercy on my daughter, as you would have expected, because she is the one who is ill. But this woman has taken upon her the daughter's pain, the daughter's illness, in such a manner that everything the daughter is, the mother is as well. She carries this enormous burden, and therefore she is the one who is quite right in going to Jesus. For it is only Jesus who, through her, can bring healing in this situation. What is also interesting is the term that she uses. That is to say, she says, Lord, Son of David. It's a very sort of quasi-political type of title that she gives him here. And later, the Son of David is dropped and she sees Jesus as who he is. Lord. Lord of life, Lord of hope. Lord, in this instance, of the healing of her daughter. The narrative continues that the disciples are getting a bit fed up. Perhaps they too are looking for a quiet weekend. And they just want Jesus to tell the woman to go away. As though in some strange manner this would resolve all the problems that they are currently facing. But Jesus simply says, did you not know that I came to Look after my own people. The, I am the shepherd of the house of the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman replies, Lord, help me. And he says, it's not right to take the children's bread and to toss it to the dogs. And the woman, sharp as a tack, comes back to him and says, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And of course, there is no rebutting that. 
if Jesus felt the analogy of the dogs and the crumbs and the master's table was a good one to use, then that lady explored the falling crumbs. And he is mightily impressed and says, quite simply, these words, woman, you have great faith, your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. There are two things to note, that if Peter really was listening and really was watching and really was taking into his heart all that was being played out before him, he would have been suffering a little pain and a little grief. After all, when he walked on the water and more or less fell in it, Jesus pointed out to him that he was one of little faith. This woman, a Canaanite woman, is now being told she is one of great faith. So from Peter's perspective, he is seeing that the gospel that Jesus is speaking and living and acting through is a gospel that has to go out to all people. And the significance is in how they respond, not in who they are as hearers. And the second point to note is that this woman is healed for her daughter. That is to say, when Jesus says to her woman, you have great faith, your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. When we act for other people, we do not always understand nor assess appropriately the channel of grace that we are sharing in at that time. At the beginning, I asked if you were looking for a quiet weekend, because in that sense, this quiet weekend of Jesus, if you want to use the metaphor, turned out to be one of the most transformative occasions in his life, because out of it came the reality that the gospel didn't stop with the Jews. It continued to the Gentiles, and it therefore continued globally. That quiet weekend, or that moment of peace that Jesus was seeking so desperately, became a transformative occasion for the whole of the Christian life. So what of you and I, this quiet weekend that we would very happily have, well, you might go on one and enjoy it thoroughly with wonderful weather and invigorating views and lovely food and great experience. On the other hand, God might be planting you there for a purpose. And he wants you to be sensitive as you listen and as you watch and as you understand. He might be planting you there because there is someone who is going to come and ask a question of you to seek guidance, help, to seek an interpretation of things they themselves do not understand, perhaps even to seek healing. And the fact that God has placed you there through his love in Jesus Christ, and that he has brought this person to speak with you, means that you cannot act like the disciples and literally try to shoo them away. You can only act like Jesus to listen with great patience to what is to be said, to hear what is being intoned, and to understand what is being conveyed. That takes Christian patience, but it also means that you are a person of significance at that point in time in the Christian life. That is to say that your prayers, whatever they have been, are about to be used in a way that you may not fully grasp your preparedness for. But the very fact you're there, that person presents their need, and together you converse, indicates the ordaining of God on the situation, just as it did for that Canaanite woman. It's highly unlikely Jesus ever saw her again, 
You may never ever meet the person who engages in conversation with you about a specific issue again. But that doesn't matter. At that point in time, you were God's servant in that place. You are asked to be like the Canaanite woman, to take whatever that burden is that is being shared and to make it your own, and to respond in whatever way you consider appropriate through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and in the love of Jesus Christ. We take our lives day by day to be led for the glory of God and in that conversation whatever you share, whatever you reflect upon will be done for the glory of God and as that takes place so you will reflect the love of God in your heart for that individual and that love will not go missed. It will be significant in its compassion, in its commitment, in its authenticity, and in the fact that it is in Christ that you place your trust, just as the Canaanite woman. I hope you have a quiet weekend. Amen. Let us now turn to our intercessory prayers and recall that yesterday was Victory in Japan Day, the commemoration of the conclusion of the Far East War. And so we open with a reflection in our prayers on that topic before we move on to general intercessions. Let us pray. God our Father, in the dying and rising of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have brought life and salvation out of cruelty and death. We mark victory in Japan in gratitude for the courage of the Allied forces who suffered for freedom in the Far East campaign and in sorrow for all that hinders the coming of your kingdom of peace. Give us wisdom to learn from the bitter memories of war and hearts that long for the unity of all nations. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom there is no east or west, no north or south, but one fellowship of love across the whole earth. And we pray for peace and reconciliation. Heavenly Father, you have called us in the body of your Son Jesus Christ to continue his work of reconciliation and reveal you to the world. Forgive us the sins which tear us apart, give us the courage to overcome our fears and to seek that unity which is your gift and your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Bless your church here and as we meet in our homes, and when the time is right, as we gather again together. Confirm us as people in the faith of the gospel. Inspire us with love for your house, commitment and zeal in your service, and joy in the well-being of your kingdom. Bless your servant Elizabeth, our Queen. Govern the hearts and minds of the Queen's ministers and counsellors, that they may fulfil their service for the welfare of the people and the glory of your name. Bless those who are involved in researching for a vaccine to protect all people from the virus that we have come to know as COVID-19. With your comfort, be with all who are in trouble. Heal those who are sick, especially from the effects of this virus. Give mental and physical strength to those who care for others, whether in hospital or in the community. 
console those who mourn, supply the wants of those who are in need, and be near to those whom we name in silence before you. These things we ask now, with the unspoken prayers of our hearts, in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who taught us in prayer to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. Our concluding praise today is the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. You will find it, if you're able to access Church Hymnary 4, as number 489. And our music team will sing it to the tune, Down Ampney. <laughs> Peace. 
and we conclude our service with a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto you, and promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your people, as may be most expedient for each one of us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of you, and with all for whom you pray, in this day and always. Amen. We now come to that moment in our service, which is our farewell. It's also a good time to mention that our service next Sunday, which is going to be the 23rd, will mark the dedication of the Robin Chapel, which took place on the 20th of August 1953, in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret. The second item to note is that if anyone would like a hymn, a psalm, a paraphrase of their choosing to be sung as part of our worship, then please do let me know. The email address is on the website and I'm very happy to respond if it's at all possible. And so, until we meet again next week, thank you for worshipping with us at the Robin Chapel. Take care during the week. May God bless you in all that you do and open your heart with that power of sensitivity in the spirit that you may be conscious of what he is calling you and asking you to undertake for his glory. Stay safe and serve the Lord in peace with justice. Amen. Goodbye.